Well, today we're going to look at something a little bit different. A very interesting rifle. It's the exact replication of the World War II Delisle fully suppressed rifle. It's built on the uh, SMLE Mark III action. It has a 4.5 ACP or 4.5 auto barrel and with a two inch shroud uh, and it's fully suppressed. So I mean, a 4.5 ACP round is a subsonic round anyway, but with the suppression here, it's totally silent. So the commandos, World War II, a lot of different forces used them, uh, even in Europe, Asia, uh, in Burma, all those sort of places as a very deadly silent weapon up to 200 yards. This is an exact faithful replication of the Sterling version. Absolutely every uh, detail is identical. It's beautifully made. And this is available from TW Chambers in Scotland. It's 36 inches overall length and weighs 9.4 pounds, which is quite chunky weight because it's all steel. There's no plastic on this at all, but it's it got incredible balance to it. Basically, as you said, there's a two inch shroud. Normally the Delar had a uh, 7.25 inch uh, 4.5 ACP Thompson barrel. Uh, TW Chambers has gone for a 12 and a half uh, or 12 and three quarter inch Wolfer match grade chrome molly barrel inside. That's because our English laws say we can't have a barrel shorter than 12 inches, so they've gone safer. Then the rest, you have eight baffles up here inside for the suppre suppression. You can release the shroud and that comes off. You have exact replica of the open sights from 50, 100, 150 and 200. The action is silky smooth and just like the original, the bolt is shortened because the wolfer barrel protrudes back about two or three inches into the, um, the action itself. That's so you get a perfect feed from the modified magazine, which just takes standard Colt 1911 mags. I think during the war they had, it's, it's seven shot magazine, but during the war I think they did have 11 shot version as well. They've even, TW Chambers even gone to the point they've actually put a bit of tufnel here in the bolt. So when it goes down, it's quiet. And that's like the original as well. You've got the two stage trigger here, uh, which is the battle trigger. The Wolfer barrel itself is, I said, 12 and three quarter inches, and it's got a one and 16 inch twist. Uh, and all the woodwork is beautiful walnut. Anyway, we're gonna take it out. We're gonna shoot it at 25 yards, 50, 75, and 100 yards uh, with three different factory ammunition and then we'll do some reloads. Hopefully you're gonna enjoy it because it looks like a lot of fun. Well, we've had a good look through the specifications on the Delisle uh, Carbine in 4.5 ACP from TW Chambers. Now we're gonna shoot a selection of factory ammunition. Uh, only have three here on offering at the moment uh, and then we'll do some reloads later on. And we're shooting at 25s, 50, 75 and 100 yards, progressively further ranges. Uh, although the iron sights here, it's all open sights obviously, uh, are graduated from 50 to 200 yards. We'll do 200 yards later, but let's just see what groups you can get with a factory here. Uh, typically a 4.5 ACP or 4.5 Auto uses a 230 grain uh, full metal jacket. And that's what we have. We have two loads of those in uh, PPU and Magtech. And then just for a bit of fun, we've got some uh, Hornaday Zombie Max, and that's uh, a Z-Max bullet with 185 grains. We'll just see how they shoot. Remembering it's got a ported barrel, so hopefully the velocity is dropped down it's a subsonic round anyway, uh, it's below 1,000 feet per second, but having it ported, we'll be interested to see, we've got the chronograph here, um, how quiet it shoots. So anyway, not me waffling on, let's uh, shoot it. We'll do some three-shot groups, okay? Well, it's quite nice, easy to load. Absolutely, nice ejection. There's no recoil on that at all. That was quiet. That was let me have a look. 800.5 feet per second. Let's get my pen. <laughs> so that's 805. Sorry, 800. All right. Yeah, feeds well. I really like this, it's really nice. Uh, 840, just climbing up slightly. I'd say that feeds really smoothly as well, very nice. There's a slight take up on the trigger, as you expect on the double trigger on the military. <laughs> and the final velocity is 863, so just climbing up slightly. Right, okay, let's go and look at the target. 
Okay, well, that's the first group we shot with the, the uh, Delight 25 yards. That's not bad, uh, it's with a Magtech, uh, and it's the first three rounds we've actually shot through, and I think the barrel needs a little bit of conditioning in. Um, so we'll go on now to the next uh, loads, which is another two uh, 30 grain load, and that's from PPU. Let's see how they shoot. Next factory uh, reload we're going to try are the PPU, that's another 230 grain full metal jacket, and I'm going to aim for the head this time, and uh, point of impact actually at 25 yards, seems to be almost dead on, and that's with it, the rear sight set at 50, so let's see how these shoot. Oh, again, that's so quiet. Uh, that was, uh, oh, 806, so almost identical as a Magtech. So his trigger gets, we have to get used to this trigger. I'm used to, you know, old sporting triggers, but it's a, uh, a slight first uh, stage pull, and then you've got a, a reasonably long pull on the, uh, the second stage, and we'll measure that later to see actually what the pull weight, pull weight is. That is uh, 826. Last round. And that was 810. Slightly more consistent, that one. Yeah, very nice. Let's go and see what the targets are. Well, that's a nicer group from the PPU. Uh, 25 yards, it's a couple of inches, which is not bad for this. And so, we, you know, we're just running the barrel in straight away and I'm getting used to the trigger. So what we're gonna do now, we sh shoot the uh, Hornaday Zombie Max, and then we'll push this back to 50 yards and shoot the uh, same ammunition again. And finally on the factory, we've got the uh, Zombie Max, uh, fantastic name, 185 grain. I'm really, really interested to see uh, what velocities we get out of these, because that should be uh, higher velocity. So uh, here we go. Right, feeds nicely. Yeah, that's supersonic. I'll we'll keep going. Yeah, 1,079. Well, that's what we expected. It's 185 grain bullet going faster. Oh, it's very intuitive to shoot. That's very, very nice. 1,092, last round. That's 1,083. I'll be really interested to see what the accuracy on those are, so let's go and uh, have a look. Well, as expected, the uh, Zombie Max were uh, supersonic, so they made more of a noise, but we thought we'd just test them anyway. And yeah, look, you know, premium horn of the ammunition and very good accuracy. And actually, that's exactly where I was aiming as well. So it's spot on. Right, well, now we've um, moved the target back to 50 yards, which is a nice range to have. I've left the rear sight at 50 yards uh, on here, although it's shooting point out at 25. So I'll be interested to see if it does actually drop. Um, so we're going to start again now. Uh, three shots with the Magtech. Um, and after we've done the, the, uh, the 25, 50, 75 and 100, I'll choose the best load and we'll do some fire shot groups as well. And then we'll do some penetration tests and you know, the usual stuff we get up to. So anyway, this is the Magtech at 50 yards. The loudest part of that is actually the bullet hit the, um, the wood board. <laughs> It's a bit like a 2 2 subsonic, but a lot more oomph behind it. <laughs> this is great fun. Yeah. I don't know if you can hear that, there is quite a delay. You can hear that it's doing 800 feet per second from the report to the, um, to the target. Okay, so let's now try the PPU, the 230 grain at 50 yards. 
I'm going to enter, uh, well, shoot the head for this one, like I did last time, and see if there's a drop uh, point of impact at 50 yards. I was expecting the magazine, I don't know why, not to feed very well, but I'll tell you what, we've had, it's been flawless, I'm very impressed. Oh, I'm aiming at his chin. That's got to hurt, isn't it? Last round. Oh, that's very quiet. Yeah, 865 that last one. Okay, let's go and look at the targets for both of those rounds. Okay, so that's the yard, that 50 yards, the Magtech. I pulled that one a little bit, which is a bit of a shame, but that was exactly point of impact again here. I was, eight, well, I was aiming here on the wrist. Uh, and then the uh, PPU, I was aiming at the chin. They're two very close together, one off again. It seems to be shooting like that. It could be effect of uh, the harmonics and the barrel, the bedding. I'm not too sure. It's probably me, to be honest with you. But at 50 yards, I mean, that's, uh, you know, that's a man down, isn't it? So I wouldn't uh, worry about it too much. Let's put it up to 75 yards and uh, repeat the process. Okay, now at 75 yards, we're going to try the Magtech again. Um, I'll aim uh, centre body again uh, with the Magtech and see if it drops down. It's a little bit uh, more difficult to see at that range, but let's give it a go. I bet it's quiet. Yeah. <laughs> it's very pronounced that delay, isn't it? Blimey. So without that um, bullet actually hitting that board, I think that's pretty quiet. We'll actually do it without hitting some boards. We'll shoot into a, a longer distance so you get a real good idea of um, uh, the subsonic nature of that bullet in flight. Fantastic. Okay, great. That's, that's the Magtech at uh, 75 yards. Now we're going to try the PPU. Okay, now we're going to do the uh, PPU uh, at 75 yards. And I'll aim for the head and, uh, well, directly at the head, I'll look chin again and see what point of impact shift there is at, less, at 75 yards. <laughs> yeah, the open sites, I must admit, are quite crude, but they were a battle site anyway. But... They do align quite nicely, but I must admit, I'm having to get used to it. Okay, 75 yards with the uh, PPU, let's go and see how they shot. Oh wow, that's good, that's fantastic, look at that. That's the uh, Magtech, I was aiming here, point of aim. They've actually gone, I think it's that one there, this one here, this one here. So, okay, I mean, that's almost the same group size as at uh, 50 yards. And we put up to 75 yards on the open sites, and it actually, it actually has gone a bit higher. So you could keep it on 50, and I reckon it's still shoot point of aim. If you go up here, these are the uh, PPU. I was aiming here on his mouth, well, on this, just on his chin there. It's quite difficult to look for those open sites. And on 75 on the open sites, look how high it's gone there. Again, I think you could put it on 50. But 75 open sights for those and that battle um, trigger, I think that's pretty good. I mean, that's a, you know, a dead soldier, isn't it? Okay, now we move the target back to 100 yards. And I've got to say, it's a blooming long way for my old eyes, especially with open sights. But we're going to give it a go. We'll shoot the Magtech in the body, and then we'll shoot the uh, PPU up at the head at 100 yards, three shots. And then we'll do some groups at maybe 50 yards uh, for five shots. So here we are. Let's go. Give, wish me luck. It's about a half second delay, isn't it? Right? <laughs> it's very satisfying, very satisfying shooting this. I don't like the trigger very much, but that's 
just me. Oh, nice. Okay, let's go straight up and shoot the, uh, the PPU. And I've left the um, open sights actually at 75 yards because they were quite sh the PPU was shooting uh, quite high, weren't they, at 75? So hopefully at 100 and maybe bob on. But you never know, it might go over the top, we'll see. Let's see if I can see the head. <laughs> Blimey, that's hard work. I think they're just slightly faster, aren't they? Right, last shot. Yeah, the foresight just about covers the whole head, but I'm just on his chin again. Okay, well, let's go and see. <laughs> oh, well, I can see one in the head, that's not too bad. And actually, there's the middle group, actually, those mag tech, look, they're all in there. Blimey, that's pretty impressive. Oh, no, there's three in the head, look, look. Okay, well, that's the, uh, the mag tech. Uh, again, it's same point of impact, you know, that's on 75. I mean, at 100 yards, that's, I think that's fantastic accuracy. Okay, here, I was, I was aiming here. It's very difficult to see the head. The actual foresight blade was actually taking sort of that much of it. So I was aiming down here, so two here. And one there, okay, that might be me with the trigger, but I mean, that's, I'm pleased with that. I think it's quite good. That's very quiet. That was uh, 6.2 grains of unique powder. I'm having to single load these because I loaded a little bit long and it wouldn't quite feed through the magazine. But, uh, and that, I didn't get velocity on that. Let's try that again. Not sure why we're not getting a velocity. Ah, that was uh, 838 feet per second. Last one. And that was 781 feet per second. Where'd the other one go then? Through the same hole with it. Another reload, we've got 230 grain around those bullets and we've got seven grains of long shot this time. Again, I've loaded it a little bit too long, so we're single shotting them. So look, aim for the head this time. Uh, 855 velocity. Uh, much harder hitting these. 811. And that is uh, 788. Well, that's a better group. Look at that. That's quite nice. That's uh, seven grains of long shot, 25 yards. Yeah, we're getting somewhere. Okay, our over, overall length is a little bit too long for the magazine. Um, but that's, what's that? Well, oh, inch and a half group, I think that's very good. Now, well, using the uh, 185 grams Emax, uh, I'm going to use uh, six grains of tight group and see how they shoot. These have a better overall length, so they should feed okay. Yeah, chrono's on. Hmm. Uh, 999.9. <laughs> Quite nice. Still subsonic. A thousand and eight. And a thousand and seven. Let's go see the target. Okay, we shot those uh, Z Max 185 grains. Let's see how they shoot. Oh, yeah, they look nice. Look at that. These reloads are shooting really well. Look. Again, 25 yards. Very, very nice group with the uh, six grains of a uh, uh, tight group, I think that was. Yeah, excellent. So we'll, I think we can definitely say we've improved on the, the factory loading at 25 yards and the further on.
Okay, I just wanted to show you how to uh, disassemble the Delisle, and it's uh, semi-disassembled at the moment, just to save time to show you. Basically, what you would have is the outer shroud like this. You have two Allen keys uh, or nuts here, which fit onto the end cap. You undo those. This, this will come off, or sometimes it will stay on the outer shroud. The shroud then literally will come off with the handguard, or you can take the handguard off if you want, because it's a little bit tight under this securing ring here. It'll all slide off this end. So put that aside and it will reveal the first inner workings of the Delisle. What you'll see, there's an aluminium shroud here, which goes over the barrel section. And then you have a series of eight baffles. So these are um, held on by these two nuts here. I've taken them off already because to save time. Take these off and then now you can individually take off, I'll move it here, each baffle with its spacer, there's a little spacer in between. Let's say eight baffles with 14 little spacers. They just slide off. If you want to do it quicker, this is what TW Chambers told me, you can actually just push the shroud fully forward and they all come off. The shroud has to come off anyway. So let's take the shroud off. That's just there to redirect or keep the gases in um, around the barrel. So we'll put that to one side. So then what you can see is, you can see these baffles uh, and the spacers in between. These baffles, there's two, there's two different types. First, you have the primary baffle here, which hasn't got a cut out at the top. You can see the standard baffles have a cut at the top here. This is two mil thick and the standard baffles are only a mil thick. This is the one which goes on first and that's your primary or blast baffle. And then you fit on your spacer, obviously both sides, and then your baffles there's other seven baffles as such to build up the uh, um, and the blast baffles, the baffle stack for the sound reduction. And it also aids that they're very easy to come off, very easy to clean as well. But what it reveals when the aluminum shroud is apart, which is the most, this is the heart of the system really, you can actually see here the barrel and this front nozzle section. This is called, well, they commonly call it a German nozzle. And what it does is, but underneath this, uh, I've got a picture that I'll show you, and we'll insert it, is, muzzle is drilled through to vent further gases onto this shroud, the German nozzle, and it gets redirected back here along the barrel. So you get some of the uh, precursor uh, expansion wave coming back into the, the chamber for the first noise reduction. And then when the bullet exits here, it goes through the series of baffles, which will be in this position, and that gives you the, uh, the secondary uh, noise reduction. Uh, these are Lofer Wolfer barrels uh, and they're chrome molly. Uh, it, it, this is the only thing which slightly differs um, from the originals is because in England uh, we have a minimum 12 inch uh, barrel length, uh, oh, it's illegal. So we have to have it at 12, or it's 12 and three quarter inches. And therefore the baffle stack is only this section here. On a standard Delisle or the very original Delisle, you'll have seven and I think it's seven and a quarter inch barrel and obviously a longer baffle stack. But in the test, you'll see it made no difference really to the uh, the sound reduction at all. I think the the more baffle stacks you have is quiet, but uh, the 4.5 ACP or auto is a very very slow uh, moving around. It's subsonic anyway, so it's the noise reduction is fantastic. One thing to look at on this is you're also supplied. I wanted to actually show you actually this baffles again. Um, obviously, 4.5 uh, caliber is uh, 0.452 of an inch. The gap or hole here through the baffles is 0 0.600. But to help you uh, and when you reassemble after you've cleaned it, because this does get gunky, this is clean now, um, you have supplied an alignment tool. And this has brass rings here and they're 0 0.440 of an inch. So when you slide it in to the muzzle like this, there's a barrel, it'll go in, make sure the bolt's open and put your finger here so you don't want to break the extractor ejector. Get it in position, and then <clears throat> you can fit as a primary. Get the two mil thickness one first. This will then go on through, and it'll just help align. And then you can start building up with the spacers, and then the seven standard baffles, like such, like so. And it will help to align all these baffles because when you get it on, I won't put them all on, but when you get to the end will be out here when you put the outer shroud on you'll want to tighten this back on for, onto the outer shroud and what it does is it'll be here 
it'll actually uh, center on this uh, center nylon uh, bushing here and you can actually tighten it up so you actually get it perfectly aligned so when the bullets exit it won't actually hit on the baffles it's a nice little neat tool and very easy to use and it's a, but an essential bit to have so there you are that's the internal workings of the delisle um, it's not as complicated as most people think um, and very 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 easily um, cleaned and looking at it very very well made well i hope you enjoyed that test on the delisle it's absolutely fascinating i love testing these old uh, weapons of world war ii uh, if you liked the video please like and subscribe and we'll um, do some more content in the future for you